What is up my new Vim friends? Today we're going to be talking about setting up Golang inside of Kickstart in Vim. Now I know I just recently did a video about setting up Golang inside of my own NeoVim installation, but I, I, this was requested. So here's your hint in case you want to request things, I will actually work on them. So I'm going to go over this Kickstart in Vim config. It's pretty straightforward. It should be relatively easy to set up. And then I'll go into a little bit more detail on some of the different components. I'm also working on this video because I'm working on the Java debugging issue that I've been experiencing over the past several months, and it's really complicated. Pour one out for all the people who have struggled with debugging. I feel like debugging in any language is hard because you have to connect the debugging software to NeoVim, and even just getting the debugging software running in your command line is a challenge. So. Stay tuned for the Java video on setting up the configuration for debugging. Hopefully I can get that resolved. But in the meantime, let's talk about some Golang and configure it inside of kickstart.invim. All right, with any language, we want certain pieces or capabilities inside of our editor, syntax highlighting, smart code completion, diagnostics, hover, method signature help, some auto imports would be great, so we don't have to remember those, and then some nicer things that are more involved like formatting, debugging and running your tests, and generally being able to dig into your code and understand what's happening. Step zero of this process is you should have NeoVim set up on your machine. If you can't type in Vim and have it execute, then you don't have it installed and you should start there. Next, we need to clone and install kickstart.invim, and that should install on your machine. I'll leave a link to both of these in the description, but that's kind of the base level that we're gonna start with before we dive into some custom configuration for Golang. The nice thing is Kickstart in Vim is relatively simple to get up and running. And so once we dive into our directory, so for me, this is under my .config folder. I'm on a Mac OS, I'm on an M3 architecture. And so I have this config cloned under my Kickstart in Vim. If I open this up, so I have an alias right now to open up this Kickstart configuration using KVim. I've done this in a few other videos, but essentially you pass it an environment variable so if we did something like KVim here, then you can see you can use your InVim app name and use different configurations. So let's open this up and let's go into init Lua here. Let's go in here and then inside of tree sitter, then there should be several languages. And so you can see in here, we have a bunch. If we go all the way to the end, we can add our new language, which is go. Save this file and whenever you restart, of them, then you should see it install that new grammar. What tree sitter gives us is syntax highlighting. And also this is a dependency inside of other plugins so it can parse and understand how the language fits together. And then you can do different things like context aware, debugging or testing. I'm not sure if the two plugins I'm using right now are using that, but there are many plugins that depend on tree sitter. So it's a good base level to install and get configured. So if we wanted to test out our syntax highlighting, we can go over to a simple Go project. This is just under a folder on my machine and the structure looks something like this. So it has just a base level. It has a Go mod and then a hello Go and a hello test Go. Both of those are what we're gonna be looking at. They're very simple. So if we open them up, we can go into hello Go and we, you see that we have some syntax highlighting because funk is highlighted and then we have different highlighting for the variables, and also for the types of the method signature. Next up, we're gonna configure and install our LSP. And so there's many pieces to an LSP. I have a video and also a separate article that I'll link in the description to get more in depth into this. Essentially, there's a variety of components that you need to be able to talk to the language server protocol, which is specific for our specific Golang server. And so we'll need to install our own server and then we'll need to connect it to NeoVim using a variety of plugins. I think there's maybe four that you have to install at least. And what the LSP does, it allows you to navigate the code base. It allows some auto completion. And so you'll see a CMP plugin or snippets or like Lua snip installed alongside it. For us, we need to just set up and install Go Please, which is the preferred language server for Golang. So if we go down to, there's actually a comment I believe about installing this already. And so if you go down into servers, this is where we have our configuration set up to be able to uncomment this. If we save this, then when you restart NeoVim, 
this is going to get installed and it's going to get wired in because it already has configurations for these servers down here at the bottom and it's going to loop through them and install each one and that's generally all you need to do for your LSP to be configured. So this is one of the easiest ways. You don't need to rely on piecing it all together or using LSP zero, which is what I've used in the past. This all just works and you uncomment one line and you're good to go. If you want to add more snippets, I believe that there is a friendly snippets block here. And so you can uncomment this line if you want to get even more snippets than what are included in the default like Lua snip stuff. And you can uncomment this and it'll get even more. So let's also go ahead and do that. We'll uncomment this bit right here. And we now have friendly snippets and we have tons of snippets to choose from. Let's jump over into our code now and see that the LSP installs and that we actually get some autocomplete here. We're back over in our code. Now let's open up our kickstart invim and you'll see friendly snippets installs. You may have it flashed to a different color scheme, but it should resolve to Tokyo night, which I believe is the default still. Now, if we go into hello, go, we can see that our LSP in the bottom right hand corner is setting up our workspace. It should set up really quickly. If you run into issues with this part, then you can always do LSP log, and this will give you all kinds of logs. You can see some of my failed attempts in the Java debugging here. So this should give you any information to be able to debug and understand exactly what is going on. There's another one that is LSP info, and this will also show you what LSPs are connected to your buffer. We can see that we have one, and we do have two different servers. We have a Lua LS and a Go Please, but only one is attached to this buffer. Now let's give this a little bit of a test drive. And so if we jump down here and we delete this signature, then we should be able to see int and it give us some nice autocomplete. You can see that we have a snippet, so we can actually extend this. And I believe you could do that with control Y and you could put an interface in here. We don't want to do that. We want an integer. And so we can do control Y and you can see it auto complete that for us. Awesome. We can also do a go to definition. So if you do a GD on print line, you can jump to this specific install of Golang. For me, I'm using ASDF to manage my Golang version. And so it jumps right in here and we can see the definition for print line. All right, now that we've covered a lot of the easy things, let's jump into some formatting. So null ls used to be the plugin that a lot of people preferred. You could go and use none ls. I personally prefer this new one called conform.invim, and I believe that is the default for like lazy invim and also for kickstart.invim. So if you want to set up our formatter for Golang, then we can come down here into this section in our init Lua file. And you can see we have an example where we can add our Go configuration. And so for us, we wanna install Go format. If you wanna configure other formats, so you can have multiple file types in here. If you need that, then check out the link that I have in the description. You can add other file types. So maybe you want a uh, Bob file type here and you want that to go to your Go format, then you would configure it this way. And then any Bob files would end up using that specific formatter. Now, if we jump over back into our code, we can see that if we mess up this formatting and we delete these indents, which Golang does prefer tabs, which I learned the other day. So thank you for whoever posted that. If we save this file, then it should automatically resolve and format our code for us so that we don't need to run any commands. If we wanted to run this manually, then we could mess this up again and we could do leader F and it will run the formatter and format our file for us. All right, here's the part where everything gets real interesting and more difficult. So now that we've set up our LSP, our formatter and our syntax highlighting, now we can get into debugging. Now, if we go and search for debug inside of our init Lua file at the root level, then we see this really nifty line right here that we can uncomment with GC. And if we save, we can go over to this file by searching for file and debug Lua, go into here. And this has all of our configuration basically ready to go. So if you're on the latest, you will need to make sure that you have this new dependency, which I didn't have initially, but you should have Mason to install all the debug adapters for you, Mason InVim to connect them, and then the UI, which is this InVim DAP UI to give you a nice UI component whenever you're at a breakpoint and you want to step through some functions. I will tell you that 
I do not have this working on my machine. I'm still working on connecting NeoVim and our specific debug server, which is Delve, but I'm confident I can get this working. I finally was able to get Delve on the CLI working, which I'll show you here in just a second. So this configuration already exists. It sets up all the dependencies and we have this invim dap, which is the debug adapter protocol, similar to the LSP, but this is for debugging code instead of the autocomplete and the language server that we're connecting to. The specific files or plugins that we need are invim dap go, which you'll see here. This is the one that connects the Delve debugging tool with our NeoVim instance. I mentioned I haven't gotten this working, but I will show you as far as I've gotten. And then there's other commands in here, which I will change because I don't really use these F commands. So we'll change this to leader and DC. And then under this one, I also don't really use the F command for this. So we'll do another leader and let's call it DO maybe. And so we'll save that. And then down here we have Delve. This should already be configured and set up, but we will need to install it because we have not been sourcing this Lua configuration. So do know that we will still need to install some stuff. It should install when we restart NeoVim, but we can save this file and then jump over to our code and see how far we can get. All right, over here in our code, we should be able to see that we have Delve installed and set up. And so you should see that whenever you run Mason, you have Delve and it is up to date and installed. If we set a breakpoint, so to do that, you would hit space B and to run the tests, you can do the leader DC like I configured before. And if we do that, then we have this menu of different options. You should see this Delve set of options. If we do a debug test, I don't expect this to work. And so it'll run and it'll say something like failed to launch. If we do Another command, which is Lua require, if I spell require right, and then we do dap go, then we do debug test. This will also fail for us, but we'll see a little bit more in the debugging session. This has to do with not being able to connect to Delve itself. I've tried a number of things. I will leave a link in the PR that I have open to hopefully get this working on my machine. But do know that Delve and Golang is very specific to your architecture. And so something that I ran into is if I did architecture, I'm on an ARM 64 and this did say I 386 at one point. That was an issue I had to resolve. But now if we did Delve debug and hello go, then we should be able to d jump in here and run Delve from the command line. And if we do a list, hello, go, and we do like line 10, then this will list the file and we can actually set a breakpoint. So if we do breakpoint, or actually it's break, and then hello, go, and line six. Now we can list our breakpoints and we have that listed. If we do continue uh, or C for, for the shorthand version, then we'll see that we run to that command and we can debug or do something else. This also works for tests. So if I hit C, we should see a print hello world. If we wanted to debug our tests, let's say, then we would do this command where we're debugging our test. And instead of delve debug, we would do delve test. And note that you have to do these little dashes in between and we would have our test file. We would run this and see that it executes. Then we can see we don't have any breakpoints, but we could set a breakpoint by doing break on hello test. And I know this is actually at line six, I believe. So if we did breakpoints again, then we see that we have one. Oh, we may have had one before, but it wasn't enabled. And if we continue, then we can see we're debugging here. And if you want to print things, like you can run some commands and execute and see exactly what you're doing. If I wanted to run that add function, I could do call add. And let's say I wanted to do like three and four. You could see that the output 
is returned up here in this values return section. And I can continue and that test does pass. So even though I don't have it configured in NeoVim, I still have Delve configured on the command line. And hopefully this gave you some insight into being able to use that in case this doesn't work for you. All right, another option for running our tests is to actually use NeoTest. Now, if you're wanting to debug or debug your tests, then you should just solve the debug adapter stuff. But if you just want to run some tests, then I was able to finally get this one to work. So if we open up our config and we go into init Lua and we go down a little bit, let's look for conform and we'll put this config there. We will slot in some new configuration. And if we do space F, that'll format. And right here we have NeoTest and some dependencies and our specific test plugin that we want to use, which is NeoTest Go. This is some boilerplate from the configuration. Essentially the two pieces that you will need to add is NeoTest Go and then require under the adapters. We'll also add some key maps to this so that we can run our different tests but I will show you that here in just a minute after we have this installed. All right, we're back over in our code. And if we do hello test, we can jump into this test file and we can run a new command, which is this Lua require neotest.run.run. Make sure you have the two runs in there. And then if you run this, then we should see a little check mark on the left hand side next to our test. If we intentionally break this by saying it should be four, then if we run that same command, this will rerun and we'll see a nice little pop-up that says that our test is failing. This is what I really like to use whenever I'm in other languages. So I'll probably use NeoTest to get by without having that debug adapter protocol configured for the moment. If you wanna configure some other key maps, let's jump over to our other config here and we will outline our other key maps here. It's a little bit of a mess, so we'll format. Basically, the ones that I use the most are this leader T to run the nearest test next to my cursor. If I want to run the whole file, then I do leader TF. Then there's an output panel and a summary panel, and you can rerun your last test. I will put all a link to this with an article that has all this configuration in it, so don't feel like you have to jot this down at the moment. If we went back over here into our Golang file, then we can go in here. If we go in here and we want to do the whole file, then we can do space TF. And this will run the whole file and give us that failing test again. I'll leave a link to a really great video from TJ DeVries on simple NeoVim debugging setup in case some of this wasn't quite what you're looking for. That should give a lot more context. There's other alternatives, like if you want a one plugin to connect everything for you, then you could check out go.invim and that should give you one whole plugin that configures all of this for you. I personally like, you know, adding it piecemeal and understanding it. And hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight in how you can do that inside of Kickstart InVim. As always, I appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments if you have other videos on NeoVim or other command line stuff that you want me to go over. And thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.